Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold with Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by James Tracy. He's a master club fitter here. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about shaft length today. James, uh, first of all, I think really the idea here is that it's not as simple as cutting it down is going to give you more control and increasing the length is going to give you more distance. Golf is never that simple. Mm -hmm. You know, where if you do this, this will happen. Right. Especially when you're fitting golf clubs. You know, I'd like to say that I know exactly what is going to happen if we cut a driver down a half inch or make it a half inch longer. Mm -hmm. But I've learned as a fitter that when you make promises like that, inevitably the golfer is going to throw you off your game. But there are some general things that we talk about, you know, when it comes to driver length specifically. You know, I think in a chase for distance, especially for your driver, the longer you make that golf club, the higher the ceiling is for the potential of distance. Because mm -hmm. you're adding club head speed. You know, the only way to hit it further is you got to, you know, add more momentum at the bottom at impact. So the trade-off though is as you add length to a driver shaft, you're only gonna increase your club head speed by small increments. You know, if I add an inch to someone's driver, I'm not expecting them to add five miles per hour, maybe not even three miles per hour of club head speed. So the reality is the only way that ball is actually gonna go further is if you send it off the face with more ball speed. So you have to be able to maintain mm -hmm. a centered hit if you're adding a small amount of club head speed. So what we usually say in our fittings is, you know, for every one mile per hour of ball speed, you have the potential to pick up maybe two or three yards if everything else stays the same. Right. So if you add one or two miles per hour of club head speed and everything else stays perfectly the same, you're talking about maybe five to 10 yards. Right. But the reality is that something else is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. As you make that driver longer, Generally, you don't hit it as solid. Generally, you don't have as much control on the face. Generally, you're going to miss a few more fairways. So if in a perfect world, that longer shaft gives you five, six yards, you're going to lose something to gain it. So right. for me, adding distance by making your driver as long as possible generally isn't the best recipe. Now on the flip side, uh, what are golfers going to see if they cut down shafts? You know, obviously the length might be a little bit shorter. Will that control though, you know, will, the, will their shot be more controllable? Totally. Well, I mean, if you just look at a set of golf clubs, right? For the ma majority of golfers, their driver is the longest. Mm -hmm. And as you go through your irons, unless you're Bryson, they generally get shorter. So as you make a driver shorter, that is a tactic I will use sometimes if someone's struggling to hit the center of the face, you know, and they're losing control. And that loss of control and not knowing where your golf ball is going to wind up has a lot to do with just not hitting it the same way every time. So if I can show someone that they're gaining better hit location, their centeredness of contact is consistently better with a shorter driver shaft, then that sometimes is a massive win. For a lot of golfers that just run to their local builder and hack their driver down, throw a new grip on it and expect things are going to magically get better, that doesn't happen all that often because mm -hmm. when you're cutting the shaft down, you are changing the characteristics of how that shaft actually works. You are changing the balance of weight of that driver. So your sensation of the head as you're coming on the downswing is going to change. Mm -hmm. And it won't always change for the better. The reason, I mean, you look at the driver landscape, I mean, almost all drivers at their stock length are pretty close. You don't see anybody coming out with a 43 inch driver you know, traditional 460 head or, or someone coming out with a 47 inch driver. I mean, the reality is that 45 to 45 and a half inches is generally gonna give you the best balance of distance and control. And for a lot of golfers that just, no matter how good the shaft and head combination is, if they can't control and get in play a 45 inch golf club, then the tactic for me is trying to build them a secondary club mm -hmm. off the tee. When control is really at a premium, that player probably needs a three wood or a driving iron. So those situations where I need to get this in play, I need to have control, distance might not be a priority on this particular tee shot, I have a go-to club for that situation. And then mm -hmm. when control is not the most important thing, it's always important, but it's not, I got room, and I'm really, I need to advance this ball as far as I can, that's really what the driver is for. It's for making oh, the yeah. ball go further and giving yourself the most, um, being the most aggressive you can off the team, having the shortest approach shot as you can to maximize your scoring. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I, there's obviously so much that goes into it besides, like we said, besides 
distance increasing with more length and vice versa. But uh, let's say someone wanted to cut their driver down, uh, and you'd mentioned the swing weight and how that'll change. Um, what would be the differences people would notice in you know the feel of their swing? Yeah, I mean, generally, I mean, you're, you're removing material, right? So the club is getting a little bit lighter. You know, if you look at a tour issue golf club, you know, for tour players that are playing stuff that's shorter, generally their head weights are pretty heavy. You know, so if you're cutting a driver down and you're losing a little bit of feel with that golf club, you're generally going to want to make that head a little bit heavier. Some sure. companies, like Titleist, for example, they have weight kits that you can add some weight using the SureFit weight. Some other companies allow you to adjust it. Lead tape's a good option. Hot melt's an option. I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can supplant that weight back into the head. But again, there's no perfect formula mm -hmm. there because everybody feels the golf club a little bit different. Sometimes a lighter club and a shorter club, maybe that works for someone. Mm -hmm. But I see it more often than not. It's the player that has speed, hits it all over the place, thinks, hmm, I'm gonna chop this baby down. You know, give right. me some control. And that shorter length may inspire some confidence, but it doesn't end up promoting that straighter ball flight because without being able to feel that club head and without that club being balanced as it was designed, you're adding another problem mm -hmm to the equation. Sure. It doesn't always work perfectly. Driver length is not necessarily decided by someone's height either, right? Definitely not. You uh, know, I think the driver especially, I mean, it's a weapon. Mm -hmm. It's, I, this club's supposed to be long. It's supposed to be my, I want to be aggressive off the tee. So I would say if I do a thousand driver fittings, I would say that between 44 and a half and 45 and a half, a hundred percent of the time. It's very rare I go outside of that. And that, and really that's something I'm probably not recommending. I'm just, you know, Giving that golfer yeah. what they want. You know, maybe they just really want a 47 That's just driver. what the results of the fitting yeah. indicate. Cool. I'm not, you know, I'll, I'll explain maybe the pros and cons, but if at the end of the day someone really wants to try a 47-inch golf club, hey, that's what these are. They're toys. Like, let's experiment. Yeah. Let's have some fun. If I really feel like someone needs a golf club that's shorter than 44 and a half inches to get off the tee, it's probably not a driver. You know, it could be one, a mini driver. It could be a three-wood. It could be a, something else that's designed at that type of length because the head weight and the shaft weight are more appropriate at that type of length. Right, so you're never as a fitter obviously going to recommend an extreme uh, emphasis on distance without giving them an option for control, whether that is you know, an, an average uh, kind of moderate length or it's maybe it's a really long driver and then kind of a better, more controllable option yeah. uh, for maybe a fairy wood or a mini driver as well. Never is a scary word, but I would say it's very rare. Mm -hmm. I would say that the one person that sometimes I just feel like, hey, let's try a 46. It's the player that hits 14 out of 14 fairways, mm -hmm. but they hit it 150 yards. And they just, like, the only thing they want in life is to hit it a little bit further. Yeah. And after maximize, find, find the best possible shaft, the best possible head, the launch conditions are just perfect. But it's still not going mm -hmm. as far as they'd like. Then it's like, well, the only way that you can ever possibly hit a little further is you got to be able to generate a little bit more speed. And if we felt like making it a little longer than normal doesn't cost them enjoyment in the game, then that can happen. Mm -hmm. But like I said, it, that's, I can't say never, but it's, right. it's rare. It's rare. For sure. Well, James, this was some great information here on uh, the shaft lengths uh, for drivers specifically. It's not just about distance or, just, or control. There's a lot more that goes into it and some of the things will be sacrificing if you make that decision. So, James, uh, thanks for joining us today. This is some great information.